a long time ago. His, his grandparents told him this story, which they, they heard from their parents. And they said a long time ago, there was a, a, a non-indigenous man, a, a, an American, a Munia, they said, came up from the States. And he came up and he sat with the elders in ceremony in Onigami, in the uh, sweat lodge, in the, in the shaking tent, in the teaching lodge. And they talked about uh, Bob Wendy's in the hole in the sky. They talked about alternate realities. They talked about those things. And uh, I said, oh, that's interesting. And so I left it at that. And then uh, two months later, I'm in Edmonton. And again, two ladies approached me after the ceremony. And they told me the exact same story. And they, they were from the exact same reserve, Onigami, in Northern Ontario. And they said, but what they said was, that man named that came to visit us at that time, we didn't think he was from the States because he spoke really funny. And do you know what his name was? I said, no. His name was Albert Einstein. I said, I said what? So Albert Einstein is sitting in ceremony talking about alternate realities with, 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 our, with our elders. Awesome. I thought that was pretty cool. <laughs> so somebody had another question? I have a question. Hmm? When, she, when you're finished with her, you can get your hand up, okay? I'm going to bring you the microphone. Hi, uh, my name is Daphne. I'm an Anishinaabe from Timiskaming First Nations. Uh, this might be a dumb question, but why is East that way on the map? What do you see, what? The, wait, East is the other way on the map. Oh, the East? And I'm wondering why. Oh, those, con those uh, directions? Yeah. Those directions are just... Uh, just to orient people about uh, where, where everything is. Because uh, for every indigenous person, they look at that. And it's connected to the sky also. Like for, for my people, if we look away, we look uh, east. We look east, we call that Bewapan or Wapanuk. And Bewapan means coming light. Wapanuk means a coming dawn star. Which is not a star at all, but it's the planet Venus. And if we look to the south, we call it Osawan or Osawan. And it means it is yellow. And in, the, in July, in June, July, and August, if you look directly south on the horizon, just that before the sun rises, there's a bright, bright yellow star hanging in the, on the horizon in the south. But that's not a star at all. It's a planet, Jupiter. So that's what we call south. And then to the west, Naga Pan Paksamu. There are some names we have for the, we have for the west. And the Naga Pan means that disappearing light. And it means that evening star. But again, it's not a star at all, but it's the planet Venus. So of course, Venus being, whether, depending on what side of the sun it's on, it's either the morning star or the evening star. And of course, you look to the north, Kiwaitin, we're talking about that north star, but there's Kiwaitin. Egagache, we call that. Egagache means it's standing still. That's the only star that doesn't move in the sky, Kiwaitin, the going home star. So those are some of the relations we have with that, uh, those cardinal directions. Hopefully that answers your question. So, I have a thing about the planet. How you tell is planets don't twinkle. Like sometimes planets are still. Oh, yeah, okay. Green, that's, a good, that's a good question. So she asked me. That's my question. Is where is the hole in the sky on the map? The hole in the sky is where that star is. You see that seven pointed star there where that guy's pointing? Yeah. That's the hole in the sky. That's the PDs, the seven sisters. Just for your information, the Japanese people call that star Subaru. Mm -hmm. So if you ever see a car driving around called Subaru, it'll have a star emblem, and that's what it represents. That group of stars right there. <laughs> Thanks for coming. Um, I really enjoyed your presentation. Um, thank you so much for coming to Montreal and telling us these really, really cool truths about the world. Um, I want to ask about, first I'll ask about the bear. Just that, I know you said that different nations, people will meet each other and share stories and help to rebuild knowledge. I hear, I heard the Cayugas tell the story of the bear and how he, it flips around over the seasons 
Um, it tells, uh, anyway, how is the bear, that knowledge coming from the Cayugas, or is that bear from the Cree stories? And if it's like distinct, any comment on why it's the bear for two very different cultures? Well, that bear, Musquat, we call it in, 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 uh, in my language. And uh, of course, it's a very sacred being. And one of the understandings is that in Cree, the bear, the name Musquat is a contraction of the phrase Muski Giyawa. Muski Giyawa contracted to Musquat. Muski Giyawa means this being is medicine. And so in, in that regard, we hold that bear very sacred because we have observed uh, the patterns and, and the behavior of that bear. And we found all kinds of uh, medicines. The, uh, the medicine, one of the basic medicines they use for the aspirin comes from weak ass that the bear, that bear found for us. And uh, we, we still use weak ass to this day. We still use, weak ass is a rhizome that goes in uh, on the bulrushes. And uh, we still use that today for a lot of, a lot of our ceremonies. And uh, we, we observed the patterns of that bear there's a story about, like I said, a lot of indigenous cultures hold that bear and, and those particular stars as that bear, identify the groups of stars as that bear. And that's because our people weren't sedentary. They traveled all over the place. And in doing so, they exchanged knowledges. And they just, just adapted it to their area, their environment, their latitude that they see this thing from. And so when you see Moscow out there, one of the understandings is that prior to the, anything, there were huge bears roaming all over the place, you know, we were told. Just massive bears roaming everywhere. It was the time of, uh, of uh, Mistapio. Mistapio means giants. It was the time of giants. And not only, not only uh, big, huge bears, but big, huge bu bu buffalo, big, huge beavers, big, huge bison roaming all over the place. So there, everything was massive. And uh, that, that says that there's a living memory that our people have passed on from generation to generation. We've been here for quite a while. There's, a, there's another group of star, a star up in the sky called Mitegizik. Mitegizik means the heart of the sky. And the heart of the sky is in a constellation called uh, Pipun Pinesio. Pipun Pinesio is winter thunderbird. And if you look on the, uh, the star map up there, there's a, a group of stars called Draco, around where the Big Dipper is. Right above the Big Dipper, uh, and the Little Dipper there, you can see Draco, where those moles are. There's a big snake-like thing, that's a Draco. And so our North Star right now is Polaris. But due to something called precession, the wobble of our Earth's axis, it takes 26,000 years to complete one whole cycle. So 26,000 years from now, North Star will be our North Star again. But for our people, the, the stars of Draco, some of the stars of Draco and some of the stars of the Little Dipper represent the uh, Puerto Pires the Winter Thunderbird. And uh, at the chest of that Winter Thunderbird, there's one particular star called Mitegizi, which is the hole in the sky. And the interesting thing about that is that, uh, the, uh, no, I shouldn't say hole in the sky, I'm sorry, the heart of the sky. And uh, so the heart of the sky is pretty much the center of that precessional cycle, that 26,000 year cycle. It's the center of that. So that says our people have been watching that sky for over 26,000 years. So we've been here for quite a while. Mm -hmm. But our elders always tell us, well, we were always here. So. <laughs> uh, I, um, I noticed that pretty much everything you've spoken about tonight is the night sky um, and constellations and stars. I didn't hear very much about the moon mm -hmm. or the sun or eclipses and so on, and, and, but I'm sure that these things must also have beliefs and myths and, and things arising out of them. Um, you were clearly familiar with the concept of the solar canoe because I spoke about that with you earlier. Um, in terms of the solar canoe, what, what do you know about that? Like, what do you know in terms of which, which uh, I don't know what word to use, cultures, uh, indigenous cultures, you know, which 
tribes as a standard word. Do you, do you, do you know specifically uh, which uh, indigenous peoples had this belief uh, of the solar canoe? Which guy do you get less money? The solar, the the solar canoe, do you know which specific, uh, or, or some, do you know some specific tribes that, that had this particular myth? They had what? The solar canoe. Oh, solar. <laughs> well, well, pretty much all indigenous people prior to coming to the Europeans went by a lunar and uh, a solar cycle. And it, it was very central, very, very obvious central in their, uh, their belief systems. And uh, did that, uh, that solar, solar cycle is uh, represented in, in, in things like the Sundance, how very important that, 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 uh, that, that energy is to, to, to our existence. Peace, we call it peace, and we, uh, we call the, uh, the moon Tipiskawi peace, which means night sky, night moon, or night sun, I should say. And uh, we looked at that moon and we, we realized that uh, it had its own phases, and as we watched it follow that sun around, there were times when uh, the moon would chase the sun, and there were other times when the sun would chase the moon. And this was after the new moon. And during the, during the full moon, they were opposite ends of the sky. But we also realized that there were 13 full moons in, in, in regard to the, the ebb and flow of, the, of the, the patterns of the animals, patterns of the plants, pattern of the, of the weather, that it, 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 uh, it began again. So we use those at that 13 moon cycle. And it became pretty much like a year for us. 13 moons in one, one complete cycle. So yeah, prior to coming to the Europeans, uh, pretty much indigenous cultures in North, Central, and South America went by that lunar calendar and that solar cycle. Yeah. Honestly, kind of forgot what I was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I should have let you go first. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to go here for Uh, yeah, I was wondering, uh, you know about the dreams, like they're a foundation for like reality, but can they also be like alternate realities and like stuff that's happening like in them? I don't know if it goes that far in that direction, like with um, indigenous beliefs in general, but yeah, I was wondering. Was that a question? Or? Yes, it was. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so uh, when we talk about Bhagavan Gita, that hole in the sky, and uh, the, uh, you understand that uh, there are other realities out there. And uh, one of the things about that is that we come from that reality into this reality, and we, uh, we, we uh, spend our experience here and the time that we have here, and then we return back to energy, and we go through that hole in the sky, and we continue our journey in other realities. Because we understand there's multiple realities, not only, only this reality and the next reality. And uh, one of the, they emphasize the fact that we don't hang around here. We don't keep coming back trying to get it right. We, we continue our journey elsewhere. Because there's, there's totally out, uh, multiple realities out there. And when, like I mentioned before, when we dream at night, we, we're exposed to these possibilities, all these infinite possibilities that are out there. And uh, so we're showing different things. One of the others even went so far as to say that uh, Sometimes, when we're dreaming, we, we sync with another reality. And when we sync with another reality, then we dream that we're dreaming. Have you ever had, had experience like that? You dreamt that you were dreaming? And that, the elders say that's when you're syncing with another reality. Some, somebody in another reality is dreaming, and you're dreaming their dream about, that, about something else. And it goes on and on like that, just totally crazy. <laughs> Thank you. I think we'll do maybe two more questions. I just have a quick question. Is there a connection between like uh, non-indigenous, like astronomy, like people like maybe Plato, like I don't know, Plato or Vedic astrology, like from India or like the ancient Greeks or ancient Romans? Is there a connection in the belief system or between like the constellations and what you talked about in indigenous cultures with non-indigenous cultures, is there a similar understanding between the two? Like between non-indigenous and indigenous peoples of how they understood the constellations? Some of them are, some of them are, are totally different. Some of, the, some of the concepts are like uh, 
reincarnation, the East Indian people, they understand that they, they talk about reincarnation. And for my people, we, we don't uh, hold that, uh, that perspective. But some are similar, like when we, when we uh, speak with people from the uh, Northern Hemisphere about some of this, the, the constellations, like the constellation uh, they call Orion. A lot of cultures all over uh, nor uh, Northern Hemisphere, they identify that group of stars as a very particular being. And my people call him Mistapio, the giant. He's known as Sabe, Sasquatch, Bigfoot, Yeti, Vulnerable Snowman. All these cultures identify that particular group of stars as that particular being, which I found was pretty interesting. So some, yeah, there's some similar similarities. And that, that just suggests that there's information that's being shared also. Mr. Deere, I think you have a question. <laughs> <laughs> one, sec one second, Scott. Mr. Deere is going to go first and I'll go to Maybe not as much as a question, but just to uh, reaffirm what you said. A lot of it is held in the language. There's so much wisdom that is in there. Because when we talk about who we are as Uwe Uwe, people say our original being. Really, Uwe is a person. Uwe comes from the root word Zinawe, which means forever. So now, like you stated, we are, we, are, we are energy that comes into this walking clay, because even in our language, when he's on the road, that has nothing to do with a bear, bird, or wolf. Mm -hmm. He's talking about this clay that's infused with the spirit. And then now, Rarunga, the, the great sky chief, is having a dream. The dream has to get guessed. The dream gets guessed, and it goes from dream to fruition, and everything comes from there. Just like what you were saying. Mm -hmm. And to that question, the guy says he wants further knowledge and information. Well, if you want to know more about the Iroquois, there's a guy from uh, uh, Lilwagyu. You can go on a uh, 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 teaching that I did. It's called the um, uh, Prophecy Gathering FNTI. Anyway, he comes in there and he takes our whole Iroquois cosmology and full where all those star constellations are. Anyway, but just to reinforce all the things that you said. Great. No. Thank you. Okay, I think we'll go to Scott for our last question. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, what's that circle thing? What is that Castor and Pollux, they come up in the winter time, just before dawn, they come up, they rise up before before the sun rises and it gets bright. And when it gets bright, the wolves start howling. And so they call that, that, that they call that false dawn. But that's when the wolves start howling because they think the sun's coming up. So that's why they call it it fools the wolves. Castor and Pollux. Just another comment before we before we finish is just a just to uh, something to think about. One of the things our, our uh, elders told us is that uh, our Creator, when Creator created everything, Creator had a thought, and whatever Creator thought about came into being. Creator thought about us, so we came into being as beings of energy, beings of light. So we have a direct creation, a connection to that Creator, to our Creator. And uh, so that part of us, which is directly connected to Creator, can never die. So what we call that shock, energy, light, can never die. So they go on to say, since Creator can never die, Creator is never ending, right now at this very second, creation is still being created. So that means that we'll never, never understand what creation is. We can only understand what, what we can experience and what we can dream of, but there's more, a lot more to it than that, much more. So we leave it at that. Next year, I'll ask you. Hi. Sky, my helper, my son, my helper, <laughs> and our 